Good morning, North Class. So happy to be with you this morning, or maybe it'll be in the afternoon when you see the video. I'm sorry that uh, we had to close the class for a couple of days because of COVID, but you'll be back soon enough. And today I wanted to share some things about um, maps and learning how what direction to go in when you're exploring. Because maps are really good for uh, when you want to uh, know, like you want to go on an adventure, but you don't quite know where you're going. And so you can use a map. And sometimes you can make a map to share with somebody else. Like you could make a map of um, your room, or you could make a map of the, the playground here at Lila Day of all the different things, to all the different places in the yard. So let's start out with a song. And it's called East, West, North, and South. It goes like this. East, West, North, and South, from the head of the river to its mouth. Up, down, all around, climb a mountain, look around. Sounds good? Yeah, we could climb East Rock Mountain and we look around. One of the uh, good things about climbing to a high spot is you can see in many different directions. So that, that's not the end of the song. There's another part of the song. East, east, west, north and south, from the head of the river to its mouth. Up, down, all around, explore the world, find common ground. You want to try one more and put the whole song together? All right. East, west, north, and south, from the head of the river to its mouth. Up, down, all around, climb a mountain, look around. East, west, north, and south, from the head of the river to its mouth. Up, down, all around, explore the world, find common ground. Common ground is things that we share in common with other people or maybe even a common place that we live. So, now, but how do we know which direction is east, west, north, and south? Well, one of the ways that we can find that out is that the sun rises in the east. And so I'm sort of, when I'm looking into this camera, I'm sort of squinting, I'm, the sun is coming right in my face, but I know that in this direction is East Rock Mountain and the sun rises up and now it's sort of at that point in the sky and it's going to go all the way across the sky and set in the west. So, hmm, I know that this is east and there is west. That's kind of, that's kind of rough, but east and west. Now it's trickier to figure out north and south. North and south, I need a compass. And a compass is like this. And what's special about a compass is that this little pointer spins around and gets pulled by magnetic north. So I'm gonna put it down on the table. You gotta have to, to use a compass, you have to put it flat. And then I'm gonna show you which direction north is in. So there we go. So north, you see, do you see where the red pointer is pointing? That is north. And the opposite of north is south. And then that way is east, and this way is west. The kids in my after school program have come up with some silly rhymes to remember the directions north, east, um, south, and west. And they, they said, let's see, never eat soggy waffles. I thought that was kind of silly. Anyway, if you have a compass and you know which direction you want to go in, you can just follow the compass until you get there. Like, if we wanted to go to Hartford, which is a city that's north of New Haven, 
We could just follow our compass north and keep on walking. It would take us a long time. Anyway, today I have a story called The Antlered Ship about a group of friends. Well, I don't know if they're friends really at the beginning, but a group of animals go on an adventure together. And there's a beautiful map in this book that I want to share with you. So, here is the map, the beginning of the book. And this dotted line is the course that the ship takes. And there's, ooh, there's things called like the Island of the Toad King and the Maze of Sharp Rocks. Ooh, and there's this right here, it says Pirates. Oh, so let's see, let's read the story and see what happens. The Antler Ship. The day the Antler Ship arrived, Marco wondered about the wide world. He had so many questions. Why do some songs make you happy and others make you sad? Why don't trees ever talk? Or do they? How deep does the sun go when it sinks into the sea? But when he asked these questions to the other foxes, they just were silent. What does that have to do with chicken stew? They would ask. So Marco went down to the harbor to see the ship, and three deer greeted him at the gangplank. Marco wasn't surprised to learn that they were lost. So there's Marco, and I guess these are some other animals of the, um, of the forest are with him. And these are the three deer that were on this ship, and they're, they're lost. They don't know where they're going. Well, we hope to hire a seaworthy crew, explained Sylvia, the captain. I'm afraid we're not that great at being good sailors. Well, I'll join you, Marco said, he thought to himself. I will search the seas for foxes who know the answers to my questions. Now, a pigeon named Victor volunteered along with his entire flock. We want to have adventures too, they cooed. We want to have adventures too. Coo, coo. Welcome aboard, Captain Sylvia said. We're going to a wonderful island with tall, sweet grass and short, sweet trees. When we get there, we'll eat a delicious dinner. So these are the kind of maps that they have on the boat. Oh, but the voyage was more difficult than anyone expected. It rained, and it rained some more, and waves crashed over the sides of the deck. Why is water so wet? Marco wondered. The pigeons weren't used to the hard work of raising and lowering the sails. And after the first day, they went below decks to play checkers and stayed there. And the deer worried about the sharp rocks and the fierce pirates. And they were feeling kind of seasick. They huddled in the bow and waited for something bad to happen. The bow is the front of the boat. After days of drifting and eating only crackers, the animals were damp and cranky. We should have stayed in the woods, Sylvia said. Deer aren't supposed to go to sea. We should have stayed in the park, added Victor. Pigeons aren't supposed to do hard labor. Marco eyed the deer and the pigeons. Foxes are not supposed to be vegetarian, he said. Still, I guess we have to do the best we can. Mm. That evening, Marco found a recipe book in the galley and he cooked a warm and hearty stew. Should we look at the charts, he asked, after everyone had eaten? eaten? So the charts is the name of what you call a map for a boat. It's called the chart, but it's still a map. It's a boat map, it's an ocean map. We might find adventure here, said Victor. And trouble here, said Sylvia. We'll find the island with the tall, sweet grass and short, sweet trees here. And here. 
And perhaps foxes too, Marco thought. Foxes with answers. So they were looking at their maps to find out what direction to go in. Here is a compass that helps them know where's northwest. <laughs> On the map, there's a thing called the compass rose. It's not a real compass, but you line up your compass with the compass rose and then you can use the map. As they plotted their course, the wind picked up. The storm clouds thinned into marvelous swirls. Raise the sails, Sylvia cried. Ooh, look at where Marco the fox is, right out on the edge of the antlers of the ship. In the morning, they came to the maze of sharp rocks each one large enough to tear the bottom from the boat. But the pigeons flew ahead, tracing a path through the strolls and sharp rocks to the safety of the open sea. Wow, if this boat hits one of these sharp rocks, it'll make a hole in and the boat will sink. But the pigeons and the maps guided them to safety. The next afternoon, a pirate ship burst from behind a rocky island. Turn over your treasure, the pirate captain bellowed, or we'll put a hole in your boat. Ho, ho, ho. Those looks like some serious pirates. Lower the antlers, Sylvia commanded, and the ships clashed and crashed and smashed together until the pirates turned and fled. Yep, pirates had had enough. That evening, an island appeared on the horizon with tall, waving grasses and short, waving, swaying trees. We found it, Sylvia cried. We've triumphed, Victor Cood. Do you see any foxes? Marco asked. The deer grazed the grass and nibbled the trees. The pigeons told stories of their adventures to a flock of seagulls. See the pigeons tell the stories to the seagulls. And Marco scoured the whole island for foxes. Scoured means look all over. But he didn't find any. I failed, Marco told Victor and Sylvia. No foxes, no one to answer my questions. What questions, Victor asked. Marco took a deep breath. Well, things like, do islands like being alone? Do waves look more like horses or, or swans? And what's the best way to find a friend you can talk to? Well, I can answer the last one, Sylvia said. You can make friends by eating stuff together. And Victor said, well, you can make friends by having adventures together. And Marco said, maybe, maybe you're both right. I think one of the ways that you can make friends is by asking questions and figuring out the answers together. Well then, thought Sylvia, should we head home tomorrow? Or should we visit the island of scrumptious shrubbery? Are two adventures enough, asked Victor? Or should we have at least one more? Is it better to know what's going to happen? Wondered Marco. Or better to be surprised? There were so many questions left to answer and so many more to ask. So in the morning, they raised the anchor and hoisted the heavy sails. They knew now that the wind would come and go. The clouds would sometimes make marvelous swirls and sometimes make them very wet. And that everything they hoped to find could be found aboard an antlered ship on the way to wherever they were going. Ooh, what do you think that is? I bet you guessed it. It's the tail of a whale. Hmm. I really like that book. So what do you think? Is it better to know what's gonna happen or better to be surprised?
why don't you talk about that with your mom or dad or whoever you're with. So when you get back, let's go on an adventure in East Rock Park and we can take our maps and our compasses and we can see what we can find. The other day, I was in the park with East Class and we saw a deer. And then on another day, I saw a little baby snapping turtle. And on another day, I found rock crystals. You never know what you're gonna find when you go on an adventure. Love you all, have a great day. See you soon.